OK, let me go to Ken Banks in Cambridge in the United Kingdom. Ken, uh, you know, Marcelo Neri mentioned uh, universal basic income, UBI, as it's known. It's not a new idea. It's been around for some time. Uh, here in the United States, some big tech executives are in favor of this. It is already being used, uh, or tested, rather, in some countries in Europe. What are your thoughts on using UBI to get people out of poverty? Yeah, well, per personally, I, I quite like the idea. If you think about humanitarian aid and humanitarian relief, which isn't, of course, the normal kind of uh, modus operandi for most people, most people don't constantly live in, in, in crises. But when you think about how people are traditionally helped uh, in, in relief programs, they are given blankets, they're given bedding, they're given water bottles, they're given food and resources, but they're not given cash to enable them to buy what they think they need the most. And I think this move towards the concept of giving people cash so that they can make their own decisions about how they use that money. I think it's it's the right way to go. Um, I think we've seen quite a few experiments uh, in the, the global development sector. Um, there's still much that we that we need to learn. I think when you look at it from the perspective of, of the developed world, if we can if we can call it that, um, the idea or the notion of giving people money a uh, thousand pounds or maybe fifteen hundred pounds a month giving everybody that money, whether they're working or not working, as a sort of a universal income, is, is politically very, very sensitive. There are a lot of people uh, in many countries who don't believe that people should be paid to do nothing. I think the reason maybe a lot of governments haven't necessarily deployed these types of programs yet, despite the evidence that they can actually be very effective, is because they're politically very sensitive. And, and in 2016, about five years ago in, in Switzerland, uh, in a referendum on whether the country should switch to a, a universal but basic income model, about 80% of people in the referendum actually voted, voted against it. And I think that's interesting because probably in the UK, the number wouldn't be that much, that much different. Um, as a tool for poverty reduction, I think that that is what it is. It's not a silver bullet. I think that maybe national programs are, uh, are mired in controversy and, and the politics of that. But if you're thinking about applying it perhaps locally, or to a targeted group, then there is quite a few examples out there uh, of UBI programs where a small amount of money or a reasonable amount of money given to a, a targeted community, whether they're homeless people or people living in poverty, uh, can actually have a very, very positive impact. So the evidence, I think, is, is encouraging, but the political will to implement these programs, I don't think, in many places is there yet. Dipa Sena, as I mentioned, uh, the UBI program is being implemented in some European countries. But let's talk about this program uh, with specific reference to developing countries uh, and affordability. Can developing countries afford a program like this uh, to lift people out of poverty, to give them some kind of social security net? So I would like to say two things here. One is that uh, that uh, UBI uh, program where you're giving universal income is seen to be effective when the cash amount that is being given is of a reasonable amount. And once we start thinking of giving a reasonable amount to everyone who is, uh, even if not universal, who is poor, then that does become quite expensive. Say in a country like India, it would easily cost something like, say, 3 to 4% of the GDP. And I think it also needs to be seen in the overall context of poverty so it could it is something that can be used as a social security measure as a social protection measure in times of crisis like in the covid time i think it's very useful to give cash to people but we also need to look at the uh, overall context where people don't have access to basic services and i think as a priority and as a priority to fighting poverty that's what comes first for a country like india is making sure that people have access to education to health to clean drinking water, to sanitation. And these are things that don't get solved on their own by just giving people cash. Uh, so I think uh, the, prob the way the UBI uh, debate has been going on in India, uh, the cash transfers are looked at as a substitute to everything else that the government does and in fact doesn't do enough. And that I think is a problematic issue because we can't get away from uh, providing these basic services to people. We know that markets fail in providing health, in providing uh, basic primary education. And those need to be in place first. Only then we can think of a UBI. However, there's nothing, uh, it, it as an additional small amount for certain people like the uh, uh, old people who don't have any pensions, uh, pregnant women and so on, it, it's very useful. 
Chu Chiang, uh, China, of course, used many strategies to lift people out of poverty. You outlined some of them a moment ago. But did China ever consider using uh, the idea of universal basic income as one of those strategies? No, uh, we do have similar concept, but it's never, it's never something looked like UBI. Uh, in China, we do provide like minimum living allowance to the poor household, like I just mentioned. But that's a very different concept from UBI. First of all, not everyone can get that. You need to be identified as uh, accurate or targeted poor household. Then you can apply for that uh, basic minimum living allowance. And uh, it goes through a lot of process. You will have the designated government officials to go to your family to check out your uh, living condition. And then your name will be posted in the uh, village square. So everyone in this village will look at your name and uh, they will say, well, this family is really poor because uh, I confirm that, I endorse that. So when nobody have a second opinion about your family's uh, situation, and then your name will be reported up to the uh, village comedy and reported to the government of upper level. And then they will set up an archive and a record of your family. And then they will give you the minimum living allowance. But that minimum living allowance cannot be used that freely. For example, they will provide you some basic living uh, substance like food and water and electricity. They guarantee you that. But for the extra things like the education, like the sports, uh, necessary sports issues, they will just use the entrusted payment method. For example, if your kids is going to go to school, uh, they will, the government will pay directly to the school about your books, about uh, all the stuff like the dinners and lunch, but they will not give the cash to you. But because we have already went through the wrong way, we used to just pay them everything. They give them the UBI payment. But it turns out to be a disaster. Many poor households cannot use the money responsibly. They get drunk, they will abuse the drugs, or they just gamble it away. So it, not everyone will commit to this uh, problem, but we see a proper amount of it. So we changed our way to the current practice and it looks fine now.